What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the newly upgraded Morphine M6 Mini PC. And this is one I've actually been really excited about. About two years ago on the channel we took a look at the first M6 Mini PC and it was actually powered by the Intel J4125. Back then, around two years ago, not a bad little CPU for the form factor, but we've got something a bit more powerful here. In fact, they're offering two different CPU variants and you can pick this up for as low as $140. Now it's going to go up from there with storage and RAM variants that they offer, but the one we've got here has the new Intel N200. This is one that I've been really wanting to test out, it's just been a bit hard to find, but now Morphine is offering this in their M6, and we've got a lot to test with this unit, but before we get into it, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple of years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office. But the main reason that I use URCD Keys is for their Windows Keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84, but if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my Updates and Security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here, choose next, choose activate, and Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. They'll email your code once your payment is processed, and that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. And just to give you an idea of how small this PC really is, I've got my iPhone 15 Pro Max right next to it, and I mean, it's not much bigger. So we've got a really small form factor Windows 11 mini PC here, and inside of the box, along with the M6, what we're going to get here is an HDMI cable, a mounting bracket, user manual, and our 36 watt, 12 volt USB Type-C power supply. But keep in mind, you can power this with a PD power supply also. The M6 is not a passively cooled unit. It's actually got a built-in fan and copper heat sink. On both sides, we've got a little bit of ventilation. Up front, not much going on, but we do have our power button and our LED indicator. And moving around back, you can see we've got our USB Type-C at the far left-hand side. This one is only for powering the unit. It doesn't transfer any data. We've also got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. USB Type-C 3.2, and this will do video out, but unfortunately I cannot get this thing to work in single cable operation mode. So even if you're doing video out of that USB Type-C port, you will need the other one plugged in to power the unit up. This new model also features a single 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, and we've also got three full-size USB 3.2 ports. When it comes to storage on the M6, even though this thing is really small, it actually supports two 2280 M.2 SSDs. We can get to them right here by popping this cover off. I've already taken the screw out, but once we get this off, you can see we've got an extra free slot here. So in total, you could go with two two terabyte M.2 SSDs, bringing the total storage up to four terabytes. The one that I picked up from Amazon only came with a single 512 gigabyte drive, but uh, that's going to be plenty for testing this thing out. And of course, when it comes to the specs of the new M6 Mini PC, I already mentioned we've got that Intel N200. We've got four cores, four threads, and basically this is an upgraded version of the N200. We've got a more powerful iGPU and more of a maximum clock on the CPU. This is going up to 3.7 gigahertz. Built-in Intel UHD iGPU with 32 execution units as opposed to the N100's 24 and I picked up the 16 gigabyte model. I would recommend that, but they do offer a lower end variant with eight gigs. All of them are using LP DDR5 at 4,800 megahertz. It supports two M.2 2280 NVMe SSDs. We've also got built-in Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2, and this came pre-installed with Windows 11. First things first, I wanted to take a look at the BIOS, and while it's not fully unlocked, we do have some major important settings here that we can actually access. From CPU configuration, turbo mode, C states, got them enabled here. Moving down to config TDP, this is going to come in really handy for upping the performance of this mini PC. Now we've got a built-in fan, but it's not a huge cooler. Out of the box, this is only set at 6 watts. I've been doing some testing at 15, and that's exactly where I'm going to be with it. So I'm going to go to 15 watts, save changes, and reset. That's going to bring the TDP up, and it's going to allow the GPU and the CPU to boost higher. Alright, so I've got everything here with Windows 11 updated. I've also got some applications installed that we're going to be testing out. And uh, as you can see, we've got that Intel N200. Again, definitely one that I wanted to test. 
We've got 16 gigs of DDR5 at 4,800 and the Intel UHD iGPU with 32 CUs as opposed to the N100's 24. Now it doesn't sound like much, but it can really make a difference with gaming on these lower powered chips. And one thing that's really gonna be important here is the TDP. And like we saw, we can change this from the BIOS and about 15 watts is gonna be the maximum with this little PC given the cooling system we have here. And I'm actually glad to see that we can actually go up here. So I've got the TDP on screen. We'll run a stress test with CPU-Z and you'll see the CPU jumps up to close to 11 watts, 10.4, 10.8. And now, if we put a load on the iGPU, we'll see this jump up to the TDP we've set from the BIOS. And I've tried to go up a bit higher just to see what we could do. Basically, 15 to 16 watts is all this little chip is really going to pull, given the clocks on the CPU and GPU. The fan in here did kick up a bit. It's not loud at all. It's not screaming. I mean, we're working with that really small blower style. And I'm sure if I left this running stressed out on all the cores and the iGPU, we could probably still hit thermal throttle after a little while. But under everyday normal use and even gaming, temps have been very manageable. And with it set up like this, it's actually a speedy little system. We'll just head over to Morphine's website, right to the M6 page. As you can see, they got the N200 and an N100 version with a bunch of different RAM variants. And I would say go with the 16 gigs. That's really gonna make a difference, but everything loads right up, right back to their home. And by the way, I am using Wi-Fi here to browse the web. We're also gonna take a look at some 4K video playback. We do have Wi-Fi 6 built in with this and it's pretty quick. Next thing I wanted to test out was some 4K video playback from YouTube. We'll just go with this 4K 60 demo. Full screen, stats for nerds, and we definitely need to make sure we're at 4K. But these little N chips from Intel actually handle 4K video playback really well. Even the N100, with that wattage over 6, you can get some really good playback. Up in the top left-hand corner, we've got stats for nerds. Zero drop frames through this whole video here. And while we're streaming this 4K video from YouTube, total system power consumption from the wall is around 8.2 watts. This thing only idles at about three watts, which is really impressive. But again, we're not working with a super powerful gaming PC. But either way, we are gonna be testing out some gaming and emulation. But first up, let's take a look at a few benchmarks that I ran. When it comes to Geekbench 6, we get a single core of 1,284 and a multi of 3,456. Taking a look at the Intel N100 at the same kind of wattage, over there we got a 1,185, multi-3087. And this is really because that N200 does have a higher boost clock, and we're only talking about the CPU right now. N200 will boost up to 3.7, that N100 only goes up to 3.4. So we're not seeing a huge jump here, but we are getting a little bit of a gain over that. So now let's take a look at a GPU benchmark, and we're going to be using 3D Mark Night Raid. On the N200, we came in with a total score of 5,546, Graphic score, 5,938. CPU, 4,037. Comparing this to the N100, again, at 15 watts, just like we are here with the N200, you can see we've got a really nice boost in performance on the GPU side of things, and that's because we've got 32 execution units as opposed to 24 in the N100. So far, this little mini PC actually does a pretty good job with basic tasks. You want to do some email checking, web browsing, document editing. You can get it done with this, especially at that higher wattage. But now I want to see how this thing can game. And we're not working with a high-end gaming machine. Really, these chips aren't made for gaming at all. But I think we can get some lower-end stuff and some older games out of the way. Then we'll move over to some emulation. And of course, we had to test out Minecraft here. We are at 1080p. I'm at 20 chunks, fancy graphics is on. This is the Bedrock Edition or the Windows version of Minecraft. Not bad at all. Got a couple dips every once in a while and you could turn those chunks down to around 15 and alleviate all of this. But in my opinion, it's really playable on this little machine. Moving over to one of my favorites and I can't wait for part two to be released. We've got Hades. I'm at 1080p with this game here, running at a constant 60. These indie games, lower end stuff, working out really well on the N200. And this isn't going to run anything like Cyberpunk 2077, but moving back to some good 3D titles like OG Skyrim, not too bad. We're at low settings, 900p, and on the N100 we can actually only go to 720 at low settings, giving us a 60fps frame rate. 
and we're only pulling a maximum of 9.7 watts from this CPU. And keep in mind that's GPU and CPU combined. Fallout New Vegas didn't do as well as I thought it was going to. We're at low 900p, so taking this down to 720 low is really where it's going to be if you want that constant 60. Because if you take a look at Afterburner in the top left hand corner, every once in a while we get that dip right under. And the final thing I wanted to test out here in Windows was some emulation. I'm actually pretty impressed by what we can do with this little machine. Now it's not an end-all be-all small form factor solution for high-end emulation, but here we've got some PSP using PPSSPP, Chains of Olympus, 3x resolution, DirectX 11 back in. So we've got PSP covered. If we can do this at 3x, easier to emulate games can go up to 5 and 6. Taking it up just a little bit more to some GameCube using the Dolphin emulator. And I was actually able to upscale this to 720p. So the easy to run games like this, Soul Calibur 2, Time Splitters 2, you're going to be able to go up to 720p. The harder to run stuff, you will have to keep it at that native resolution. It's pretty cool that we're able to upscale a little bit with a system like this, given the power draw of the whole system. 8 watts with GameCube. And I even tested some PS2, which has really been hard to run on these low-end Intel chips. And with something like Ratchet and Clank here, I was able to go up to 720p with this, but then when you move to something like God of War, which is a harder one to emulate still in 2024, you will keep it at that native res, and you might need to swap out for the Vulcan backend from DirectX 11 with some of the games. It's kind of going to be hit or miss, but it's awesome to see that we can emulate so much on this machine. For a lot of people buying these mini PCs, one important thing is going to be total system power consumption. So while I'm doing my testing, I've got this plugged into a kilowatt meter. This will tell us exactly what we're drawing from the wall. This is very low power. And remember, we took the TDP up to 15 watts on this. If you're leaving it at 6, it's going to be much less. But at idle, we're pulling around 4 watts. 4K video playback jumps up to 8 watts. Gaming and emulation, little mix that we ran there. Getting an average of around 13 watts. And the absolute maximum I saw this pull from the wall while doing an extreme test was 19 watts. So yeah, it's not pulling much power at all, but then again, we're not working with an ultra-powerful PC. We've got a low-power mini PC that's capable of indie games, some older stuff, and emulation. So overall, not a bad little system with that N200 and that wattage up. Now that's going to be a really important thing with this mini PC. At 6 watts, this would do some web browsing. You can do some 4K video playback and things like that. But if you want to do any kind of gaming or emulation on this machine, taking that TDP up from the BIOS is the way to go. And I'd say if you're looking for a small form factor, low powered mini PC like this, and you know what you're getting into, if you can get this with the coupon over on Amazon for around 180, might be worth it to a lot of people out there. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave some links to Amazon and the official Morphine website in the description. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. Like always, thanks for watching.